What's going on guys? Tua Cruz here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys my indoor cycling setup. So with the whole world going crazy and everything, indoor cycling is having a second wave. Normally indoor cycling is really only done in the winter season and actually I skipped the winter indoor cycling season this last winter because I was bike commuting every day so even though I have this awesome indoor cycling setup I never used it this last winter but one of the good things about this whole situation is I actually get a chance to use my indoor cycling setup and I wanted to show it to you guys today so uh, actually I don't think these clothes are appropriate for the job so let's change really quick. There we go, much better. Anyway, let's hop off the bike really quick and I'll show you guys my setup. And you can see the bike that I'm using is not a traditional bike and trainer kind of setup. I actually have an indoor bike, a dedicated indoor spin bike. And I got this bike for a couple different reasons, one of which was budget. And the second reason I got this bike is because it's a great quiet solution. Normal bike trainers, especially wheel on trainers are really, really loud. The only quiet trainers are really the drivetrain smart trainers. And those are A, really expensive. And B, you have to deal with different drivetrain issues. It can be really difficult and annoying to work with that. So I decided to go with the option of a spin bike because it's really cheap, it's really quiet, and it does the job. So a question I'm often asked on the channel is, how can you connect a spin bike to Zwift? I actually made a dedicated video about this a while back, but basically you just need to connect it with some sort of power meter. So I'll be going over how I connect this bike to Zwift. Anyway, let's take a closer look at my setup. I'll show you guys the full bike, the table I'm using, the computer I'm using, how I'm connecting it to Zwift and everything. So let's go ahead and get started. And for people who don't know how a spin bike works, it's basically on a fixed drive system. So like a fixed gear bike, when you spin the crank, the wheel or the flywheel itself will spin. And when you're just spinning it like this, there's basically no resistance. So it's really easy to spin. There's a resistance dial here so you can tighten this and that'll tighten down this brake pad, which will then add more resistance to the flywheel. So basically as you tighten this, you'll get more and more resistance. So this bike actually has the potential to be really difficult so while some trainers have some max difficulty settings, this one is basically unlimited in the amount of resistance that you can get. So it's really good training. And everything internally here is on a belt drive. It's all completely sealed so you don't have to worry about any maintenance. There's really no maintenance that you have to worry about on this bike at all. And that's one of the great other benefits about this is I can just get on it and ride. I don't have to worry about it breaking at any time like I do my other bikes. And that's something I really didn't want to worry about with an indoor training bike. I wanted to be able to get on the bike and ride it and just have it work, not have any problems. Really, I'd like that to be the case for all of my bikes, but can't be too greedy, I guess. For the pedals on here, I'm using power meter pedals. These are my new Favero Asioma power meter pedals. I just made a video reviewing these pedals, so you can go check that out. Basically, there's a power meter inside here, and I use this to connect to Zwift. And these are my new shoes here. So I just announced on the channel we got a new sponsor, Santic. These are brand new shoes, so they sent me out my new pair. I actually haven't put the cleats on yet. We're going to do that today. And these are my old pair of shoes right here. You'll notice that the cleats on these are pretty destroyed, so it's time for some new cleats. It's time for some new shoes. And these shoes are pretty sick, check this out. They're kind of like an olive green color, but based on the way the light hits them, they have a reflective material in them, so it changes from a green to a purple. Pretty cool set of shoes. We're gonna get the cleats on that in a second. But anyway, let's continue with the rest of the bike tour. We got a basic bottle mount holder here. This is a bottle I got from the Giant store in Taiwan when we did our Taiwan trip there. And on the back here, the other great thing about the spin bike is I can use it with my wife. So we can adjust the size so she can ride it. We can adjust the size so I can ride it. And this is all quickly adjustable. I just pull this knob and then we can raise and lower the saddle. Basically, I didn't really have to change any parts on here. The only things I've changed on here is the pedals. I also changed the saddle. Everything else was stock. And spin bikes are great because they're super cheap. And they start at about $150, $200, somewhere in that range. You can get them used for maybe even cheaper, maybe even free. This one was a little bit more expensive. I think I paid about $400, $450 for it. And that's because, the main reason is because of these handlebars. It was the only spin bike I could find with a drop handlebar style, with a more lower profile handlebar style. Most of the spin bikes you see, it'll be like really upright and it'll have this crazy upright position with extra accessories you don't need. I ended up going for the simplest one I could find with this drop handlebar setup. So I paid a little bit more money for it for that. But I think the overall quality of the spin bike doesn't change much between the $200 one and the $400 one. The other thing I did upgrade though is I did change the saddle on here. Um, I'm not sponsored by Physique or anything, but I've used Physique saddles for a long time and I'm used to them. So I swapped this guy on here. And you can adjust the seat back and forth. You can adjust it down and back. And I am kind of on the limit of the height of this. So I did buy this in Asia. The sizes in Asia are usually a little bit smaller. So 
I am just barely able to fit on this. It would be nice if I could get like a few more millimeters of height, but it's better than nothing. And I just kind of deal with it with the slightly adjusted position. The same thing with the handlebars. These can be adjusted up and down and back and front. And there's just quick adjustment levers to do that. This one is here for the resistance for the brake. And this one is for moving up and down. And then this one is for tightening this part of the handlebars, which can be moved back and front. So overall, this is my indoor bike setup. I've also got a mat on the ground to protect the floor from this really heavy of a beast. I haven't really moved this very much and you'll see it. This is our apartment setup right here. It's kind of really close to our couch. I moved the couch a little bit away right now just so you can see the bike more, but normally the couch is a little bit closer. I've got a towel here because when you cycle inside, you're gonna sweat like a beast. So I usually keep my towel on top of the handlebars like that and I can quickly grab it, wipe my face. And this is the thing that makes the whole setup great. And this is the sliding standing desk from Wahoo. Um, not sponsored by Wahoo. I actually paid full price for this. And this thing was really expensive. I can't remember because I bought it over a year or two ago. I believe this was about $300 or so, maybe more. I tried looking for some cheaper alternatives that would do the job, but I couldn't really find anything available at the time. So I ended up spending some decent amount of money on this full indoor setup, about $400 for the bike, another $300 or so for the table. But it has been a solid investment so far. It's great being able to train inside and have a reliable training solution on the bad days, on the rainy days, on the cold days, and now on the virus days and world pandemic days. But anyway, this thing is really cool. It's got three wheels down on the bottom and you can adjust these levers here. So basically you just push this down, you push down on the other side, and then you can adjust the height down or up as you see fit. And me and my wife, we actually use this as a standing desk for our work. So during the day we work from home now and we use this for our standing desk when we're sick of sitting down on our work desks. So overall it was pretty expensive, but I think it was money well spent. One other essential part of the setup is the fan. Like I said, you will be sweating like crazy when you're cycling indoors, especially now when it's not winter season and the temperatures are a little bit warmer than usual. Thankfully, we haven't had to turn on the AC yet, but we're getting to that point pretty soon. So I always have the fan nearby. Always make sure you have plenty of water. The great thing about cycling indoors though is you're never far away from things that you might need. Anyway, the last bit of the setup here, this is my laptop that I use. We've got our two wheel cruise sticker on here. So sometimes I like to just watch a movie on here while I'm cycling or watch YouTube or something. But one game I've really enjoyed lately has been Zwift. So let's open that up. And Zwift is a paid subscription account. I think it's about $15 a month, but for what you get with the program, I think it's money well worth spending. And anyway, let's log in with our account. If you want to join and follow me on Zwift, you can follow me at Tubo Cruise. And to connect your bike to this game, you need either a speedometer or a power meter. The power meter is going to be more accurate and we have our power meter pedal so we're able to connect that way. But depending on the device that you're using, you might need an Ant Plus or Bluetooth receiver. And this computer does have Bluetooth but it doesn't have Ant Plus so I actually had to buy this little accessory here from Amazon. It's pretty cute. It's got a, a bike design on here. This is a USB stick and receiver so uh, this computer actually doesn't have many ports. It doesn't really have any USB ports, so I need to plug in this dongle. That's the only reason I have this. You don't need the dongle if your computer has more ports. So that's plugged in. And now it's gonna start searching for the different sensors. It's using the Ant Plus receiver. I've got my heart rate monitor on, so it just showed it's connected there. We're at 75 beats per minute right now. And the power meter is actually off right now, so let's activate this real quick. We gotta give the pedal a spin real quick. Wake it up, and the light will go on on the pedal. So that means the power meter is awake. And there we go, it found our devices. And where are we gonna ride today? Let's go to London today. And let's just pick a short course at random right now for the demo, we'll hit OK. And we're ready to ride. Let's click ride. And here we are in London. All right, time to get clipped in and started with today's ride. And right now we're at zero resistance level basically. So you'll notice I've got my, this is my live streaming setup by the way. We do weekly live streams on here so be sure to check it out one day. So I've got my webcam built into the computer right here. And then I've got the main camera over here. So let's add some resistance on here and We'll see my watts in the top left part of the screen start to go up. 
and you'll start to hear a kind of sort of hissing kind of sound or strange kind of sound and that is the brake pads rubbing against the freewheel so it's not completely a super silent setup it does make some sound but it makes the same sound basically regardless of how hard you're going so how much effort you're putting out and so I can be putting out crazy watts right now we're just going pretty low right now 80 watts 100 watts but the cool thing with this game though when you're connected with your power meter your speed is based on the watts the the incline if you're on a hill if there's a downhill and all those are factored in so we're on a flat course right now we're right in the middle of London on a flat course we've got all the UK flags and let's add some resistance here so just by twisting this knob we can increase the resistance level significantly we're going up to 200 watts right now and it also shows my other stats in the top left as well you can see my heart rate you can see my cadence those are all things that you'll need so if you have a power meter but you don't have the the cadence sensor attached you might need to get some separate equipment for that so that's another plus for having the pedals is that includes the cadence sensor and power sensor together as one and I didn't warm up at all so we're going straight up to 200 watts heart rate is starting to go up and so if I do a mini short little sprint you'll notice that this bike is super quiet we just put out like 400 watts that's not a lot but there was no change in sound so that's really cool this game has been a fun way to stay in shape throughout this whole quarantining me and my wife have been staying home mostly every day and I've been trying to ride almost every day or every other day on here at least and actually I've been really bad at working out lately so I need you guys to comment and tell me to get on my bike every day and there's no excuse we've got the indoor bike we've got Zwift we've got everything we need to do but unfortunately I just been in this lazy bum mode lately and I haven't been riding every day so it is nice to have a little bit of a break but I think it's time for us to start riding again every day get back in shape I don't have that daily commute that bike commute every day anymore to keep me going so comment down below tell me to get off my lazy bum get on Zwift and join me on one of the rides join me on one of the live streams anyway I'm gonna continue on with my ride I hope this video was interesting showing you guys my indoor cycling setup let me know how it compares to yours and if you have any comments or ideas for improvements on mine let me know I'll see you guys in the next live stream in the next video be sure to check our schedule and again a special thank you to our new sponsor Santic for helping support our channel helping us continue to make cycling videos go check them out for some awesome cycling gear and again, always thank you to our patrons who help support us as well. We'll see you guys in the next video. But first, before we go, Toonchan is cooking right now, so let's have a quick sneak peek at what she's cooking for dinner tonight. So miso katsu is actually a local popular food here in Nagoya, Japan. It's famous for its miso sauce and this is a, a fried pork cutlet. So freshly made from scratch. Oh, and she's sprinkling some sesame seeds on it. Oh, the oak san is <laughs> Alright, I'll let her get back to work. That's it for today guys. Thanks for joining. Itadakimasu!